Hi, I'm Biff Turkle. You've seen me in such fine quality, epic chemistry educational videos such as Nerds and the Nernst Equation, The Connection, and World of Tanks and Nernst, No Connection, Part 2. All right, guys. Final thing here for electrochemistry, the last part. Okay, I just made another video uh, this period regarding uh, electron spectroscopy, but this is our last part for electrochemistry. I think I've covered everything at this point. Now, the question is, how do you calculate the delta G in a galvanic cell when the solutions are not at one molar concentration? We know the original formula of delta G equals negative N F times delta E of the cell, which is great if your molar concentrations are one on both sides, but they're not. In this case, we're looking at not. And when we look at non-standard equations, we've got conditions, I should say, uh, the Nernst equation is used to calculate the cell potential. So, here's our problem. The, we're going to find the cell potential of a galvanic cell, think battery, okay, based on the following half reactions at 25 degrees Celsius. So we got cadmium plus two electrons gets a solid cadmium. Plume boom, lead plus two plus two electrons gets a solid lead, and they give us the uh, potential. And then they give us the concentrations of the cadmium, 0 0.02 molar, and the concentration of the lead, which is 0 0.2 molar. Well, the first thing we have to do, we've got to look at what is the standard cell potential, given if there was one molar of each solution. And that's where we're going to work with our cell potentials here. Okay, And if you don't know how to do that, do check out one of my other videos on that in the electrochemistry section. So, let's go about it. So, we look and hear... And we need to have, in order for our reaction to be galvanic, meaning a battery that will produce electricity, uh, you've got to have an oxidation reduction reaction. You can't just have both lead and cadmium just, you know, pick up electrons and they become solid. It doesn't work that way. That's the end of, you know, my favorite period of the day. Now, so that means one of those are going to have to be reduced, gaining electrons being reduced, and the other is going to have to be oxidized, losing electrons, oxidation. So in order for this thing to be galvanic, that we're going to have a positive, that means the cadmium has to be the one to lose the electrons, which in this case, given the value, Okay, so now we can add up, we can look at the total cell reaction. Now notice we're not dealing with any anions. We're looking at what's happening with the cations. Okay, so you find, okay, here's plume boom plus two plus cadmium gets us cadmium plus two and plume boom solid. So the E cell, the whole thing is 0.277 volts. Now if that's the standard setting at one molar of, of each solution. That's where the Nernst equation comes in. Because the Nernst equation is taking into account the standard cell, but you need to subtract some things. The fact that you have a non-concentration, that the concentrations are not the same and they are not one molar. So we got RT divided by NF times the ln of Q. Let's analyze, because that's the Nernst equation. Let's analyze. So E cell is the cell potential. The E standard potential is the standard potential cell. R is our gas constant, 8.3145 joules per moles times Kelvin. T is our absolute temperature in Kelvin. Okay. N is the number of moles of electrons that transferred by the cell's reaction, which in this case was 2. You can go back and look at the equation, you'll notice that, hey, there are two moles of electrons. Now, F is Faraday's constant, okay? We do need that, how many coulombs there are in of charge in one 
mole of electrons. And then Q is the reaction quotient. Ah, you thought you were going to escape it. You didn't. No. Where Q is equal to product over reactant. The concentration of our product over reactant. Now, may I point out that when you look at the equation, we scoot back up to the equation here. Plume boom is aqueous. The cadmium is solid on the reactant side. Product side, plume boom is solid and the cadmium is aqueous. Are we worried about the solids when we look at uh, equilibrium? No. No, we're not. So that kind of makes the numbers pretty easy for us. So we can go ahead and let's start plugging all this stuff in. So we know that the temperature is 300 Kelvin because we add 273 uh, to the 25. I think they made a technical mistake. It's really 298, but let's roll with it. You got two moles of electrons. So RT divided by NF. So here's our R, 8.3145 times 300 Kelvin divided by 2 times the Faraday constant. Now remember the two is the number of moles of electrons that were exchanged in this. So we figure all that out and you can see it's 0 0.013 volts. Wow, all that for 0 0.013 volts. That's not much. Okay, so now last piece of information we need is the reaction quotient, the Q, which is products over reactants. We already went over that, so we got 0 0.02 molar for the cadmium, divided by 0.2 molar for the lead, divide that, and our Q is 0.1. Yes. So now we've got all the pieces of information. We've got the E of the standard cell. We have the RT divided by NF as 0 0.013 volts. And we have Q, which is 0 0.1. Now we can plug all those in into the Nernst equation. So let's do it so combine it so we have 0.277 volts that was our standard potential minus 0 0.013 volts thanks to rt divided by nf multiplied by the natural log of 0.1 which is a negative 2.303 so 0.277 volts plus 0 0.023 volts because a negative times a negative is a positive and we end up getting 0 0.3 volts. So our final answer is the cell potential for the two reactions at 25 Celsius. Okay, and I think they made a technical mistake there on that one. And the cadmium being 0 0.02 molar and the plume beam being 0 0.2 molar is 0 0.3 volts. Whoa, that's the Nernst equation. Okay. So, that's it, boys and girls. I hope you liked it. This is it. This is one last thing for AP Chemistry, and that is the electron spectroscopy. And that'll be it. Okay. Take care, guys.